I think we're live. Hello, everybody. There's ELT Team Bizerta. Hello, Team Bizerta. Nice to see you here. Um, if you're if you're here, if you're live, if you can see me, if you can hear me, please let me know in the chat so I know I'm not speaking to a big, fast, empty void. My name is Jamie Keddy. I'm founder of Lesson Stream. We're a community of teachers with a passion for using story and storytelling in the classroom. And uh, if you want me to let you know about these lives before they go live, which is kind of useful, if you want to watch them live, then you can uh, sign up. There's a link below. It'll take you through to my website. You can sign up there. You can get the a free lesson plan and join the, the mailings. Um, look, hello there. We've got Elena. Hi, Elena. OLT, ELT team, Bizertas from Tunisia. And uh, we still don't know if, if that maybe is your name or not. Um, hello, Richard. Nice to see you. There's Mighty. Hey, Joe, it's been a long time. You've been looking forward to this all week. Well, I know you're a man uh, with this finger and the techno pulse. So, um, yeah, I'd love to know how you've been using it. And uh, I hope to be able to share some ideas with you. And uh, lots of people here, David, crystal clear in Edinburgh, my home city, although I'm here in Barcelona, a home away from home, and Rita in Portugal, and Borgia, hello Borgia, happy streaming, and uh, Fatin, that's ELT, Team Bizerta's name is not Bizerta, but Fatin, hello Fatin. So yes, it's been quite a week, um, this whole AI thing, this whole well, I mean, I, I did a, a lesson stream live this time last week with a member, a lesson stream member called Steve, Steve Sinclair, who might be present. And I have Steve either to thank or to blame, not sure which, for kind of alerting me to the, the fact that, um, that well, DALI 3, which is OpenAI's um, image generator, which I'd used in the past, but I wasn't aware that they just upgraded it to, well, an update, which is much more powerful, much more easy to use than, than the previous ones. Um, just before we get started, um, hello, Elena, and hello, um, Lilia. Um, let, me, let me just show you something. Um, where's my book? I think you know that uh, if you've attended Lesson Stream Lives before, you know that I'm a great, I'm, I love photography, I love, I love images, I love art. And um, do you all know who Man Ray was? Man Ray, some people will say he's a photographer, and if you say that, then you're absolutely right. I'm looking here at a photograph of Man Ray, but possibly not the Man Ray that you're thinking of, if indeed you are thinking of a photographer right now. This is a, a book that I've used many times before. It's called Photography, the Fiden photo book, 500 pages of life and love and tragedy and beauty and art and all that sort of thing. And the Man Ray that I'm referring to in the photograph that I'm about to show you is actually uh, a dog. I wonder if any of you have ever seen this image before or an image from the photographer. The photographer's name is William Wegman. That's his dog, a Weimara dog. And the name of the dog is Man Ray, I assume, um, named after the photographer William Wegman's inspiration. I don't know if Man Ray, the photographer, ever dressed up his dogs. Um, you might know he'd, he turned his girlfriend into a, into a cello. A picture of that woman with the cello holes in her back. That's Man Ray. But uh, this is Man Ray, a Weimara dog. And there he is dressed up as a frog. <laughs> and, uh, and I've got another image here. That's another image of, a, of a, a, a dog dressed up. But this one's actually dressed up um, not as a frog, but, but of a, an iconic... Um, American personality. And before I show you the photograph, or rather I should say before I show you the image, I wonder if you can guess what the fundamental difference between this image of a dressed up dog and the one that I'm about to show you is. And you probably know the answer because of the whole context of this session. But this would be a nice way 
to introduce the subject of AI generated images to your students. You've got two images. One is a photograph like this, and the other one is a, an image that I'm about to show you. Students have got to ask you questions before they see the image to work out what the fundamental difference is. And they might say, is the dog the same kind of dog? Is it a Weimara dog? It's not. I think this one's more of a, a golden retriever. Is it dressed up as a frog? No, it's not. Who's the iconic American celebrity, etc., etc.? It's actually this right here. And you may have seen this before because I, I sent this out in a lesson stream post. Um, and so what is the fundamental difference between these two images, the one I've just shown you of, of Man Ray the Weimar dressed up as a frog, and this retriever, if indeed it is a retriever, dressed up as Marilyn Monroe? And you know the answer. I know the answer. Your students probably won't know the answer without this context. The answer is, of course, this is an image that was generated by artificial intelligence, uh, specifically by DALI, that one I mentioned before, which is an image generator by OpenAI, the same company that's been in the news a lot because they have developed ChatGTP. So this is when open, this is, sorry, artificial intelligence is starting to go more and more visual. But what's really interesting, isn't it? When I look at this, it looks like a photograph. It feels like a photograph. Uh, you could easily mistake it for a, for a photograph, couldn't you? But it absolutely is not a photograph. It reminds me very much um, of, of this. Do you know René Magritte? And uh, this very famous piece of art that he created um, is called The Treachery of Images. He painted this beautiful pipe and underneath, they wrote this French sentence, which means, well, ceci n'est pas une pipe, which, of course, means this is not a pipe. I think this was sometime in the 1920s, 1929, maybe he made this. It was actually very cutting edge. People didn't like it. People said, well, of course it's a pipe. And they gave him a hard time. He says, it's not a pipe. Can you pick it up? Can you stuff it with tobacco? Can you smoke it? No, if I said this is a pipe, I would be lying. Very much we can turn <laughs> Marilyn Woofro, <laughs> we can turn Marilyn Woofro there into the treachery of image as well by saying that ceci n'est pas une photographie. It looks like a photograph, it smells like a photograph, it could mistake it for a photograph, but it is certainly not a photograph. And that to me would be quite a nice way to kind of introduce this as a topic to your students. Um, quite simply, show them an actual photograph like the one I've just shown you there, the, the dog dressed up as a frog. Tell them that you're going to show them a second image which is very similar but has a fundamental difference. Invite them to ask you yes and no questions can they work out what the fundamental difference is? Uh, they may be able to, they might not, but the fundamental difference is, of course, one of genre. Uh, one is a photograph, the one is not a photograph, it was generated by artificial intelligence. That's right, Fatin has identified this quite correctly as a hot dog. <laughs> um, a few more people here. Hello, Elena. I think we've said hello to Elena. And hello from Lillian Algiers. Lovely to see you here. Um, Jose Enrique, my friend from Mexico. Hello there, Jose Enrique. Nice to see you. Iona, hello in Greece. Esther, I'm going to be in Turin um, at the end of February, Esther. Maybe I'll see you there. And uh, I'm glad you like that. <laughs> um, hello, Daniela. Of course, not to see you there in Romania and Abuj. And there's and there's a, there's Alan. My greet, oh, Alan. I'm, apologies, Alan. Alan, I've always um, or last week I referred to you and I called you French. So, apparent apologies for that. He is the leader of nonsense, <laughs> like you, <laughs> or only a Belgian like you. So, so that this this in case you didn't notice the title of this session, the title of this session is 10 Ideas for Using Artificial 
artificial intelligence images in the classroom. And that for me is number one. I've just given you number one, quite simply, spot the difference. But usually with spot the difference, you have to look and identify the difference. You could do that in this case, but I prefer this to be much more communicative for the teacher to withhold one of the images and invite students to ask you questions, close questions, yes and no questions. And uh, it's completely up to you how you do it, of course. Um, a little warning here. I'm not completely sure if we're going to get through all 10. So if we don't, we'll do a part two next Friday because I'll be going live every Friday at the same time. All right, how does that sound? Excellent. Okay, so who was it? It was um, it was Fatten that referred to Marilyn Woofro as a hot dog. Uh, you're absolutely right because... The image of the hot dog that I showed you comes from a, a series of images, uh, which is part of a lesson plan, which I shared last week in the Lesson Stream membership, and it's called Visual Puns. And it makes use of, there's actually a, a growing number of images. I'm uploading more every day. There's currently about 20, I think. Uh, this was one of them, and it's as fat in as correctly identified, that is a hot dog. Get it? That's sexy, hot, and it's a hot dog. So it's a play on words. It's, it's a visual pun. And so I'm going to show you a few more here, and I'm going to invite you to work out the visual puns, all right? So you'll have to type these in as quickly as you can. Um, there's, a, there's a time difference or rather a time delay between me and you. So this is the next one. We're starting here with quite an easy one. Uh, we're looking here for a single word, a single word, no more complicated than that. What do you see? It's a visual pun. There's one word there being represented visually in two different ways. Again, this is an image that I have uh, created using DALI, the artificial intelligence image generator. So I know you know the answer. By the way, this is an American English word. For me, it's actually a bit different. For me, it's not that. For me, it's another thing. And the answer is, oh, there's Nidia from Appy. Hello, Nidia, lovely to see you here. So yes, the answer is a trunk. I know you got that. There's this time delay. So you're all typing in your answers, but they've not come to me yet because there's a time delay of about 15 seconds. But I'm sure that they'll come in flooding in just a moment. Okay, number two, another easy one. I'm not even going to wait for your answers here. <laughs> you get the idea, don't you? This is this is wordplay. There's one word here. It's a single word. It's a, it's a being represented visually by its two different meanings. Uh, so it's, uh, yes, and the answer is it's a bat. It's a bat. Um, number three, I quite like this one. Um, I showed this to a friend of mine. I actually showed it to my dad and a friend of mine. My dad's a friend of mine, but I also showed it to a friend of mine, and uh, he found this quite difficult to get. But it shouldn't be, should it? It shouldn't be. This is, yes, you've got it. And I'm just going back. You've all got the trunk. Uh, Borgia says, what would a trunk be in my words? And for me, the trunk of the car is the boot. Uh, yeah. So we've got we've got trunks, we've got bot we've got trunks, and we've got um what's the thing you lift up in US English? Look at the hood. You look under the hood, trunks and hoods, and we've got also Boots and bonnets, trunks and hoods and boots and bonnets. I've actually got an image for every single one of those. Um, so, yes, this is, you've got the right answer there. Fatten's got it. Jose Enrique's got it. Richard's got it. And it's, yes, the boot of a car. That's right. Sorry, a ball. <laughs> a ball. Okay, next one. What's this one? What do you see? Again, it's a single word. Um, it's being represented in two different ways. 
And it's quite nice, isn't it? It's, it's quite picturesque, that. Swan Lake, says Fatten. And Richard's got it. Richie Cloak's got it. And so is Chris. Hello, Chris. Nice to see you too. It's a bank. That's right. It's a bank. So you've got the bank, the savings bank there. If you're not sure it's a savings bank, it actually says that across the front. And of course, it's a river bank or an embankment, if you like. Um, and the last one, again, this is a single word. Um, it's a one-syllable word being represented in two different ways, a play on words, a visual pun. What is it? I should have got some prizes here. Yes, two of them came at the same time. Richie's got the quickest fingers today, and uh, Bourgeo was just behind him. So bark. And I wonder if you're thinking, how did you make these, Jamie? How did you create these images? Well, I'll show you in a little moment. Bark, woof, woof. I'll show you in a moment. But just before we do that, this, what I'm demonstrating right now, is the second idea that I think um, images offer us um, as teachers. And that is quite simply as a source of content um, using the, the likes of DALI 3. At the moment, it's DALI 3 is certainly the easiest to use and the results can be fantastic. Um, and all the images I'm showing you, I've made through DALI 3, which you can access, but I'll show you how in just a moment. Um, and it's an inexhaustible supply of visual material for the classroom. And a few years ago, 2008, when I wrote a book for Oxford University Press, there's six, six units. One of the units is titled Flash Images. Um, and I like that term, Flash Images, because we usually think of flash cards. Um, but flash cards we tend to think of as pieces of paper. They're usually small. You hold them in your hand. These are not cards, are they? These are images. You can display them on an iPad. You can display them on a big screen. You can display them on your, your mobile phone. They can be in hand, but they're images. They're not cards. And so I really like this term, flash images. And we can create series of images or slideshows of images with kind of lexical themes, which is what I've been doing here. The lexical theme here is, of course, visual puns, words with different meanings. Um, but you can really, there's there's really no limit to the, the series of flash images that we can create. And of course, it's not just for Lexus. We can create series of flash images to teach grammar as well. There's a uh, there's a lesson plan uh, in the Lesson Stream membership called Passive Drawings, which uh, I know that we've got some Lesson Stream members amongst us today looking at you, Chris, and, uh, and Richie, and Alain, and some others, um, and, and Daniel. And um, this is a, a, an activity that I know that some of you really enjoy. I really enjoy this too. And... The idea is quite simple. You, students have a number of um, phrases to work with. Each have a similar grammatical structure. So we've got, for example, the Mona Lisa being stolen, a criminal being released from prison, a, a, a celebrity being arrested, a bank robber being chased by the police. Do you see the structure here? We've got a noun being past participle, so it's a noun phrase with a passive structure. And the idea is very simply, students have to take up their pens or their pencils and give visual life to these phrases. So this is the kind of thing that you get back. This here is a bank robber being chased by the police. We've got here, we've got, um, this is a celebrity being arrested. Unfortunately, I forget I forget um, which celebrity this was, but um, <laughs> whichever celebrity it was, he got arrested um, for drinking a beer while cycling. Uh, maybe you know, I can't remember. Here we've got, this is great. This is the Mona Lisa being stolen. And what I love so much about this activity, when students put their mind to it, there's all these different ways to express this, this kind of idea visually of the Mona Lisa being stolen. Um, we've got, th this is great, isn't it? This, this, 
looks like a sort of cat burglar dressed in a what, what do you call that what's the, is it a morph suit and looking very sort of slick almost like a ninja slipping away with the mona lisa just under his arm there i'm assuming it's a him might be a her who's to say uh this one here <laughs> this is such a creative way to represent the idea from a student who claimed that she couldn't draw isn't that fantastic and one of my favorites here if you're gonna if you're gonna rob the louvre of the mona lisa there's so many different ways to do it why not get a helicopter and a monkey involved. Now, I would always, always, always urge you to use this approach first to get students drawing. Um, drawings don't have to be masterpieces. Drawings can be quick. They can be matchstick figures. Uh, and I think this is, this is to be encouraged because we don't want students to take too much time. Um, but it's a really good way to engage with language, I think. It's a really good way to kind of just to, to a step towards the visualization. And we, we naturally visualize. You don't have to draw um, to visualize. But drawing is just to become more aware of the mental images that you're creating in response to a text. Remember, there is no text without an image, and there's no image without a text. And that's a great demonstration of this. Now, after that, we can turn to the likes of Dali and find out how Dali might represent these images. We could even create slideshows of flash images to teach or rather to elicit or even revise the same language that we've already seen. So we were looking at the Mona Lisa being stolen, if we're going to ask Ch if we're going to ask Dali to depict the same the same noun phrase, how would Dali do so? Let me show you a few of Dali's um, depictions of such an event. Now, this is really interesting because the thing about Dali is once you've asked for it to give you an image of the Mona Lisa being stolen. You can then ask it for another one, and another one, and another one, and another one, and it will give you an inexhaustible supply of images. And I find this quite fascinating. Look, I mean, I've never thought, I don't know if you've ever thought, if you imagine the Mona Lisa being stolen, did you ever think of a sort of film noir scenario with these sort of gangster types with their trilby hats? and their Tommy guns, and their smart suits and waistcoats and polished shoes. It's kind of a slight mix-up here, isn't it? I don't know where these guys have come from. Uh, maybe they got a, a ship from New York, especially. I just don't know. But it's a kind of mixed-up uh, idea in my mind. Maybe not. Who's to say? Um, let me show you another one here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if this is the same guys from the previous image, but what strikes me about quite being quite strange here, it's like it's like the old joke, isn't it? How many whatever does it take to change a light bulb? You know, how many gangsters does it take to steal the Mona Lisa? With one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, at least eight. And I'm gonna guess there's a couple behind it as well. <laughs> what are they all doing? They're making it look as if the Mona Lisa is very very heavy which i'm sure she's not i don't i think that's probably even bigger than the actual size of the mona lisa especially like this guy on the left hand side don't they look suspicious i mean whatever happened to art you know trying not to draw attention to yourself if you're committing a crime i don't think these guys are very good i think they're amateurs aren't they fattens it looks like something out of a hitchcockian film i think you're right <laughs> um, so the thing that you really quickly realize about Dali is that it lacks human intuition. It lacks world knowledge. Um, and it kind of it, is, again, we think we're dealing with images here. Um, I, have, I say again, I haven't said this already. So for the first time, we think we're dealing with images here, but there's a very much a language thing going on. And I'll show you what I mean by that um, in just a moment. Again, a great one. This looks like the, this looks like the Mona Lisa is has been stolen already, and now this is a photo opportunity. They're all and what are they? Are they? 
<laughs> Aren't they? Is this a is this a photograph taken in the Wild West? Uh, I don't know. Um, what's going on here? Um, slight mixed up here. But this is what I was going to say. Okay, so Dali lacks maybe world experience and human intuition. But it's almost the language. I the language thing I was going to mention before is it thinks okay a theft the Mona Lisa this this iconic piece of art, very valuable, being stolen, maybe connects it with the idea of a heist. And what do you what do you associate height, heists with? Well, you associate heists with lots of different people, organization, laser beams, um, a la sort of Mission Impossible. There's money there scattered on the floor. I don't know why there would be money scattered on the floor, maybe connecting it with bank robberies. So it's just kind of, it's almost like collocation, isn't it? Um, or colligation. And it's just taking these ideas that it might associate it sort of language-wise and throwing them into the image. I think this is how it works. Um, this one here, I mean, it's not just, there's, there's no money here, but look, that looks to me like a bomb. Why would you take a bomb into the Louvre, if indeed they're in the Louvre here, um, to steal the Mona Lisa? I, I don't think you would, but Dali 3 decides you would because it's kind of the whole context of, of high-profile robberies and heists that involves these beams, involves people dressed up as cat burglars, it involves maybe guns, stealth, time bombs, money in bags, all that kind of thing. So it just throws them in there. Um, this is just very strange. <laughs> I mean, what, what on earth is going on here? I've just got no idea. That's certainly not the Louvre, is it? That looks like they're stealing it from somebody's bedroom. It's getting in there through the skylight window. And uh, and the, the person who I, I'm guessing is the owner, or at least the resident of the bedroom, I guess it could be a hotel room, is fast asleep. Why would the Mona Lisa be in somebody's hotel room? Maybe they're stealing it from someone who's already stolen it. I've got no idea. I think this is Dali 3 sort of conflating um, this with a home burglary. It's thinking theft. And again, it's connecting to burglaries. We can only guess here, and this is even weirder, Look at one one of the robbers is actually taking a little nap on the sofa and seems to be sort of being sucked into the side of the sofa. And what is that teddy bear doing? Who's to say? We can only guess. So this is really number three. I've been demonstrating two ideas to you here. The idea number one is using DALI or artificial intelligence image generators to generate content. I'm referring to these series of images as flash images, but also there's a lot of mileage. There's a lot of possibilities for that question. What is wrong with this image? And this is something that we looked at in last week's Lesson Stream Live, which we was the first uh, session that we looked at DALI. And we looked at some images that were similarly problematic, and you can invite students to put into words all the things that they, they can see that would be wrong with this image. Why is this not a real or a, a depiction of reality? What is it about it that isn't quite right? And it's quite fun, and the more you look, the more you will see. And uh, Fatin said, uh, the useful prompts for storytelling, absolutely. I will be coming to that later. Um, yeah, Rich has said uh, that this is the the robber being robbed. I've uh, let me just go through and see uh, what you've been saying here because I've had my eyes off the chat. Eyes off the chat. Um, I got Dominica's coming in there from from Radom. Hello, Dominica. Nice to see you. Um, and we've got uh, Marcella from this from Sondrio, Italy. Hi, Marcella. And Gertie from Salzburg. Nice to see you, Gertie. Uh, you were here last week, weren't you? And Georgia, Leanne, Georgia. And uh, really nice for you to be here. Thank you for joining us. Great. By the way, while I've got you, could I just ask you a big, big favor? Um, could I ask you to um, do 
three things. You don't have to do them all. You can do any that you like. First of all, could you like the video on YouTube? It really helps the algorithm. So if you could like this video, assuming you do like it, if you do like it, please like it, if you know what I mean. The second thing, if you're not already a, a subscriber to my YouTube channel, I would be very, very appreciative if you could subscribe and ring that bell so you'll get notifications to your email and um, whenever I go live. And the third thing, if you like and you want to share this video with your friends on Facebook or LinkedIn or whatever your social media is, all you have to do is cut the URL, the address at the top, and you can paste that into your social media of your choice and people can watch it live. And at the end, that same address is where the recording will be. So you're effectively just sharing a YouTube video. So thank you very much for that. Let me just show you a little bit now about, you know, about how to make these. Let's have a, a moment to show you how these were made. And um, it all comes down to one thing. It all comes down to the prompt. And the prompt is what you type into DALI 3 in order to ask it for the image that you want. Um, and it's really as simple as that. It really is. Um, but I just want to show you what happened to me recently. You know, I, I want to show you a little bit about the, um, the process behind the creation of one of these images. Uh, I just wrote a blog post on this. So basically, this is me just showing you the blog post I wrote. Um, this is, again, related to the visual puns activity that I mentioned before. And um, let me show you a couple more. We talked about this hot dog. We've seen this one. Uh, here's another one for you. I like this one. Uh, this is another play on words. This is a this is a, a dictatorship. Um, so the question is, how did I make this image? You can't just type in dictatorship because it, it, this is not what it will give you. It recognizes dictatorship as being that abstract noun of a form of government. And what I had to ask for was a bunch of dictators standing in a ship. It's strange, isn't it, how um, it's added some penguins <laughs> with added penguins. But for one of the images in this slideshow that I want to focus on, um, I wanted to include an image, um, a, a visual pun, a wordplay image to illustrate a fire drill. Now, you know that a fire drill is a practice that you, you, that you do um, in anticipation of an emergency. The emergency would be that one day you might have a fire in your building. So in preparation for that, you pretend that there's one, you hear the fire bell, everybody goes down into the street, forms queues, someone takes the register, makes, makes sure everybody's present. I don't know why I'm describing to you what a fire drill is. You all know, I'm sorry. <laughs> Apologies. But I wanted to create an image that um, would be a play on words. I wanted to have this a picture of a drill as in a tool, a power drill um, with, with on fire. So that would be my play on words. So I typed into Dali a power drill on fire. And this is what I got. And I, I wasn't too happy with this. I, I, it wasn't quite what I was looking for. I thought there was too, mu too many sparks and too much smoke and not enough fire. I thought that this would be too difficult for students to guess that this is a fire drill. So I, I tried again, and instead of saying um, a power drill on fire, I asked for a power drill in flames. And this is what I got, which was actually very, very similar. Again, uh, too much smoke, too many sparks. What you're seeing here is something which is sort of Maybe it looks like a sort of miniature fire, a flamethrower, doesn't it? Which, again, is not what I'm, I'm looking for. And to me, I think this would be too difficult for students to guess that what you see here is a visual depiction of a, 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 of a pun being a fire drill. So maybe not. Maybe So the, for my third attempt, my third attempt, I decided, I don't know why, I've really no idea why I decided to do this, but I thought maybe if the drill was bigger, Maybe it would be able to have a nice fire coming out of it. So I asked for a giant fire drill in flames. 
a giant fire drill in flames. And this is the first image I got. Actually, sorry, a giant fire drill on fire is what I asked for. A giant fire drill on fire. And this is quite terrifying, isn't it? This certainly is, in my mind, a giant fire drill, but definitely not what I'm looking for. Look, I don't know what they're doing here. What is this operation? Um, you can see in that disc, if you look cl closely, there are lots of people standing around it watching. I really hope they're wearing protection. <laughs> But the other, another image I got from the same instruction, which was a giant power drill on fire. Look at this. This is just quite terrifying. I mean, what has happened here is very interesting. This is a language issue that, 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 that DALI 3 has misunderstood my word giant, which is an, was intended as an adjective, a giant fire drill on fire and is interpreted to be a, a, a quite a terrifying noun. You know, I, I look at the hand, look at the mouth, look at the eyes. I don't know what Dali is thinking of here. So then I got this other idea for my, for my fourth attempt. I decided that I would ask Dali for a different kind of drill. Let's leave all this fire and flames around and, and, and hellish images. And I wanted a dentist's fire drill, sorry, a dentist's drill. I said, Dali, I want a dentist's drill on fire. And this is when I got quite scared. Let me show you what Dali gave me. This is my prompt, a dentist's drill on fire. This is what I got. I just, that's the stuff of nightmares. And it occurs to me that maybe, maybe Dali needs a, a therapist. I don't know. Maybe Dali's, this is how... Dali sees the dentist, or maybe this is how Dali thinks humans see the dentist. <laughs> I have no idea. I have no idea. So the point I'm making here is that you, you these images, we get them through a, a process of trial and error. And at this stage, I had to rethink it. I was thinking, I'm not getting what I want here. So maybe I should be looking for a different kind of image. So rather than asking for a picture of a drill with flames coming out of it, what if I decided to ask Dali to put the drill inside a fire? And that's what I asked for. I asked for a cozy fireplace with a drill in the flames. That's what I asked for, a cozy fireplace with a power drill in the flames. And this is what it gave me. And I tried this prompt again and again and again. And Dali would just not put the power drill in the flames. It would not position the power drill in the fire, despite my care and attention to the prompt that I was giving. And also, it's a bit too Christmassy here. And it's, it's only the 8th of December. In my mind, that's still too early to, to celebrate Christmas. Um, so then I thought, well, what about if I say a, a cozy fireplace and in the in the hearth, spell H E A R T H, which is the the base where you actually build the fire. In the hearth, there is a power drill, and uh, this is what it gave me. So this is very very strange. It took me a while to realize that what Dali was three Dali was doing. It was misunderstanding my use of the word hearth, H-E-A-R-T-H, -E for heart. It, it just really wasn't paying attention. It was not, it just wasn't really kind of listening to me. And that's quite fascinating because you think when you're giving instructions, you think that it's all about accuracy. When you're talking to the likes of chat GTP, you think that so many people tell you it's only as good as the instructions that you give it. But really, is it? In this case, it's just not really paying attention. So my final attempt was give me a picture of a power drill. Um, a, sorry, the silhouette of a, sorry, a cozy, I should have, I, I meant to have these in front of me, but I don't, so I'm doing them from memory. I asked, give me a picture of a cozy fireplace and there is a silhouette of a power drill in the fire. And this was bingo. And this is the one that made it to the lesson plan. In my mind, this is not the, um, this is not the, um, 
most interesting of all the images, but this is the most functional. For me, this is the best. This is a fire drill, isn't it? This is the best play on words. Ah, now, Borgia, I actually did mean to say chat GTP because, uh, you know, I think we're more, we've been using chat GTP. I, I've certainly been using it a lot. Um, and it's something that you hear said a lot, you know, that chat GTP is only as good as your instructions. There are so many similarities here. That DALI 3, as far as I'm aware, actually uses the same um, language model to create the images. So I'm assuming that there's a, there's a lot in similarity. The way that DALI 3 works with the prompts that you give is the same, is similar to the way that chat GTP does. There's going to be differences that there's going to be similarities. Um, so Joe says, apparently, if you put the important words in capitals, it helps. I didn't know that, Joe. I have looked online to see if there are any um, people with knowledge about this, but that's good to know. I'll try that for sure. Ah, oh, sorry. Yes, I, I always say chat GTP. I always do. I always wish it was chat. <laughs> Bridget, you're such an editor. Um, yeah, I, because I think it would be, I once made a, a, a video about the dangers of chat GTPing yourself, thinking it was very funny. Then I was really disappointed to remember it was chat GPT, so it wasn't quite so funny. Yeah. So what I'm trying to show you here is that behind every one of the images that uh, I've created as part of the, the slideshow that I showed you, um, the ones of the visual puns, there's a process. There's a process. Um, and this um, is something I'll mention again in a moment. But if we go back to these visual puns, I mean, you could ask, this is a, this is, could be a very good activity. And this is idea number four for students to try to guess the prompt that you put in to the machine. So what was the prompt that I put in? The visual pun is, of course, a hot dog, but I did not put in a hot dog into Dali, Dali 3 because if I had, it would have given me an image of a sausage in a bun. Wouldn't have worked. Um, I think in this case, I asked for a, a picture of a dog dressed up as Marilyn Monroe. That was my prompt. What about this one? Again, you couldn't just put in a trunk. You have to be more specific. You've got to start with an idea of an image that you want and then work around that accordingly. So I think in this case, I said the back of a classic American car, the trunk is slightly open or the trunk is open and we can see an elephant's trunk coming out. We cannot see the elephant. It took me a lot of trial and error once again to get this. I think this was about my 10th attempt. Um, so don't give up after your first one. Uh, this one was quite simple, a bat flying in the air holding a baseball bat. So this is something we can ask students to show them the image, ask them to guess what the prompt was, and then give them the prompt. Um, this was lots of people, lots of miniature people dancing, lots of miniature couples dancing on top of a soccer ball. Had to be soccer because if I said a football, it gave me an American football. Um, this was an interesting one. I wonder if you could guess what my visual, what my prompt for this one was, because this could, you're, you're absolutely, you're right. And I, and for me, I really, I've seen a lot of, um, teachers talking about using chat GTP, chat GPT, sorry, Borja, in the classroom. And I'm, and I, I love chat using chat GPT as a sort of calculator for the humanities when I'm working, looking for alternative ways to express ideas. It's great. But as a, as a, and I, and I've got some, I'm, I think it can be great for giving students feedback in the classroom, but I really don't share much enthusiasm um, as, a, as an educator for, for using chat GTP in any of the ways that we're using this. This, on the other hand, I feel quite excited about. Um, I think that using it requires quite a lot of creativity on, on our part, and I'm hoping that that's what's coming out of this. Um, now, no, this is, Veronica, like, if, if you type in just bark, 
it's not going to come up with that. You've got to be much cleverer than that. Um, because Bark, it might just give you a picture of, um, I mean, it's just like Google Images in a sense. If you put Bark into Google Images, you might get some pictures of some dogs. You might get some pictures of the surfaces of trees. But you're unlikely to get anything like this. Um, this sort of thing may not even exist. I'm going to guess that somewhere in some time in the history of art, someone has created an image like this. Um, but can you find the internet? I don't know. So we need a, a way to think of a prompt to get an image uh, back. And yeah, again, um, Nisti has said this as well. Um, so my, oh, sorry, Veronica. Sorry, Veronica. Veronica, you're absolutely right. Did I even, I didn't even tell you, did I? You're absolutely right. Sorry, apologies. And so well done to both of you. Yes, the word in question here is bark. <laughs> <laughs> um, exactly. So just one word, bark. Yes, you're absolutely right. So so what in that case, if we work, what was the prompt? Uh, my prompt for this image, again, took quite a bit of time. And it came down to one key word, which brought it all together, literally. And that word was morphed. So I asked for a dog. Bar, I, I said, no, I said, I said um, a tree and morphed into the tree is a barking dog. So you, that word was key, morphed into the tree is a barking dog. And, it, and I used that same prompt and I refreshed it. And I think I did about eight times. And out of all the images I got, this was my, my best one, I think. Um, so yeah, so this is so this is number five, and this is the the a really important one, I think. What I've just shown you there, well, what I've shown you so far really is two approaches to this tool, this very powerful tool. And number one is using it as a source of visual material for the classroom. We can use it to create slides of images, flash images, if you like. Um, to, for, for, to, to seed stories, that was Fatten's idea, to teach Lexus, to teach grammar, all that sort of thing. It's a very, very powerful tool. Importantly, I don't think it's going to save you time. It's quite addictive. And, uh, you know, I've spent a huge amount of time creating the images that I showed you. So I don't think it's a time saver. Um, this, so that's the first thing. It's a source, it's a potential source of material, of visual material, which are free from the restrictions of copyright, importantly. Um, but the second thing is that um, it is a tool for students. What I would much prefer to be doing is demonstrating these ideas to students and then asking them to try to create their own images. You know, what is a, a, a word play that you're aware of in English or even in your first language? Can you create an image to illustrate it? Or show Im images, the picture of the barking, the bark and the bark. Ask them to attempt to recreate a similar image on, on Dali. So that's number five. We're looking at possibilities like this for Dali in the student's hands. Ask them, I mean, this is actually a follow-up to the visual idioms idea where students, as I've already said, have to think of a, a visual pun of their own, preferably in English, and uh, create a visual wordplay image for it. Um, excellent. I'm very interested that you use mid-journey and stable diffusion for your own art, Veronica. Um, I would love to... I would, I would love to see what you do. And um, maybe Veronica would maybe you could if you want, if you like, maybe you could we could come on next week, next Friday, and show us what you've done because I'd love to see that. Um if if you'd like that, drop me a line, okay? Do you have my you've got my email, haven't you? So if you'd like to um come on and show us your art, I would love to see what you do and you can show us what show us what it's all about. Um uh Exactly. Now, 
you've debated the ethics of art of AI art with your C1 students. I think it's one of many, many great debates to have, very important debates. Um, and I'm very ambivalent about this whole thing. And it seems to me that you are too. I think that you know, it looks like I'm embracing this. And I am very excited and I'm very passionate about what it can do um, for us as teachers. I can't help that part of me. But I'm also very ambivalent. And I think um, that there's a lot of problems just around the corner. Um, I was speaking with my friend Dan, Daniel Barber, who a lot of you will know. Um, and Daniel Barber was uh, voicing concern for the, the huge amount of energy that artificial intelligence uses um, and how this is not a step in the right direction, you know? Um, so it's not doing anything to, to, to help the environment. There's also a, a, a bias. You know, if you type in um, man or woman, um, the chances are, and I see this again and again and again, is ra rather than sort of multi-ethical depictions of people, there's this tendency to go to represent people too often as white um, European descendants, uh, you know, very healthy. You've, and, and this is, you know, in, in recent years, we've become more aware of the importance of representing all groups of people visually um, in, in materials, and in visual materials. It seems to me that the likes of Dali is, is going, taking us backwards. Um, there's, um, there's going to be a time, I think, where people are just going to start sharing far too much of this sort of stuff. I think it's going to lead to a world of, of disinformation, you know? disinformation and misinformation. I mean, if you look at what's going on right now in the world, if we look at the, what's going on in the Middle East, um, there's there's all sorts of battles for information. And a lot of it comes down to, to visual information. Um, video, I mean, we're not at video yet. Well, we sort of, we're getting there, but we, video is next. This is how the internet works. It starts off with text and then moves on to to non-moving images, then it moves on to moving images. And I'll be doing another talk like this within a year or two on artificial intelligence generated video, which yes, it does exist, but not quite to the extent that it will. And you know, you there's all sorts of possibility, possible problems. You know, is this real? Um, and you've got journalists when they have to do a, journalists to to buy into the whole the the the, the code of conduct and have to be able to source um, their, their video content and know where it came from and validate it and verify it. And that's going to become more and more difficult. But it's also, we're at this stage in this sort of post-truth era where even if that is done, even if a video has not been validated, people very, make up, very quickly make up their minds about it or images. And they, make, they use images for their own agendas and ultimately for propaganda. So I think this really worries me. And also the more this happens, the more people are just going to become jaded and trust what they see a lot less. And ultimately, I think it could be draining, <laughs> draining the soul out of humanity, as is something that Nick Drake said. And it, but even so, I think that you know what the one thing is just the pure unpredictability of it, and that and that's maybe the biggest problem of all. I think we think that we can maybe predict the ills of a technology like this, but really we have no idea where they're going. I mean, who could have possibly predicted uh, where the internet would have taken us? I'm thinking of the likes of QAnon from a couple of years ago and Pizza Great, and this main semi-mainstream conspiracy idea that there's a cabal of, of right-wing elitists who are kidnapping babies and drinking their blood. And Donald Trump was the man that was going to step in and save the world from the likes of these people. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm not sure <laughs> you've got to, you should, it's uh, QAnon. 
Um, who could ever have predicted the likes of that, or even just in a more general way, the likes of conspiracy culture um, from the internet? There could be a time where we have artificial intelligence created religions. Who's to say? We just don't know. We don't know what we're embarking on. People who have created this know there's a potential problem. Um, drop Okay, so drop me a line anywhere. Anyway, Veronica, it'd be nice to hear from you. Yes, the, the, that's right. The tech runs and use a lot of water resources. Um, use the in-service or pre-service trainings for teachers and guiding them as to how to give them clear instructions. Is this a conspiracy? Is this about, is this about QAnon, Veronica? So look, I said there was gonna be 10 ideas. We've gone through five of them. I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna go live again, this time next week, Friday, five o'clock Barcelona time. We'll do the remaining five then. How does that sound? Um, I've not seen it. Veronica, do drop me, even if you're even if you're not comfortable going live, drop me a line anyway, because I'd love to ask you a couple of questions. All right. I'd be I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And um, does anybody have anything to add? Anything to ask? Anything to share as we move into the closing straight of this session? As it's almost six o'clock for me. And that means it might be time for a cheeky beer because it's uh it's a holiday here in Barcelona and uh I think it's time for me to go out and get a cheeky Friday beer interesting that's interesting great to great it's lovely to to I'd love to know what your how you did that and if I could see that then great well listen everybody a big thank you to all of you. It's been, I really appreciate you taking the time to spend this hour on a Friday. Thank you for your, your comments, your interactions. And I hope you have a great rest of your Friday and a great weekend at, you, um, at the next lesson stream live, same time next week, Friday at five o'clock Spanish time. All right. Thanks so much to all of you and I'll see you very soon. All right. Bye-bye.